Hey guys, I told you guys a while back that I would make a video for y'all talking about my anxiety because it's definitely been something that has been life-changing for me. I'm not making this video to get pity from anybody. Honestly, I wanted to make it in case there's anyone out there like me didn't know what to do or didn't know where to start. And honestly, what I went through, I remember researching, trying to figure out if other people went through and I couldn't find anything and it made me feel really alone and I don't want any of you guys to feel alone. So if this video can help someone out there, that is the purpose of this video. Even if it is just one person, because that one person could have been me. So I am currently 25. I will turn 26 in April. I was in my early 20s when I I guess developed anxiety. I honestly don't know where it came from. I started having panic attacks and I honestly thought I was dying because I had never had anxiety in my entire life. I had never had panic attacks. Nothing like this had ever happened to me before. So here's a little backstory of like where I was at that point in my life. I was working full time at a veterinary clinic. I was going to school full time um, at a university. I would go to class during my lunch break and then I would go to class at six o'clock at night after work. And after my evening classes, I would go to tutoring. And so my day would start at six o'clock in the morning and my day usually wouldn't end until around nine or 10 at night, Monday through Friday. Looking back, I have no idea how I did that. I don't think I could do that now if I tried. I know now that doing all of that stuff was not good for my mental health. Even though I didn't see that at the time, I was really happy with where I was at in my life. I had great friends. I was doing amazing in school, making the best grades I have ever made in my life. And then one night I was laying in my bed and I was watching Netflix. I had just got home from tutoring and I was just relaxing and laying there and all of a sudden like out of nowhere like my heart started like racing and I felt like I couldn't breathe like my head was spinning I got super lightheaded and I just remember thinking to myself like I'm having a heart attack and I'm gonna die my roommate at the time came home and I was like girl I gotta go to the emergency clinic like I'm having a heart attack. So we went to the emergency clinic. They took my blood pressure and my blood pressure was super, super high. They did like an EKG and chest x-rays and everything came back normal other than I had high blood pressure. They ended up giving me medicine for my blood pressure, went home, went to sleep. The next day felt like I had just got hit by a truck. But then the day after that, I felt fine and went to work, went to school, everything was fine, I felt fine. Then a couple weeks later, I was about to take a chemistry exam, which I was fully prepared for. I felt so confident about because I knew everything on it. I knew I was gonna ace it and do great. I wasn't stressing about it. I wasn't nervous about it. And I'm sitting there like in our auditorium and he passes out the test and I go to like write my name and it happened again. <laughs> I remember sitting there and looking at the first question and knowing the answer to it, but like not being able to write it. I thought like, what the heck is going on with me? I felt so lightheaded and dizzy and I ended up going to my professor and asking him if I could like speak to him outside. I just told him, I was like, I don't know what's going on. I'm so confident about this test and I know I'm gonna do great. I was like, but I feel like I'm having a heart attack and I need to go to the nurse's office. And he was so nice about it. He went back into the class and got my backpack and brought it out to me. And I was so embarrassed. I went to the nurse, ended up having high blood pressure, gave me some blood pressure medication, and I just kind of hung out until I felt better. And then after that, it just started happening like every other day. I would wake up in the middle of the night out of a dead sleep, like having a panic attack to where I was like terrified to go to sleep or terrified to stay in my house by myself. And one time I was just driving home from work, it felt fine, out of nowhere, my heart started pounding. I felt so dizzy that I pulled into a parking lot, like got in my back seat and like curled up in the fetal position because it was the only thing that would make me feel better. And finally I went to my like general practitioner and being like, I don't know what's going on. I legitimately think I'm dying. Like I think my body is trying to kill me. Like I knew something was wrong with me, but I had no idea what it was. At the time I was taking Vyvanse for my ADHD. Um, and he took me off that. It was a stimulant and honestly, I think that's one of the best decisions to this day is that I came off of it. I was taking like oral birth control and um, I stopped taking that and ended up getting like a copper IUD with no hormones in it. I've got pit stains from talking about this with you guys. So he ended up 
referring me to a cardiologist and for anyone that has ever seen a specialty doctor like you don't get to go the next day you go like a couple weeks maybe a month or months later and so in the meantime like this is still happening to me. So while I was waiting a month to see this cardiologist who I truly, truly believed that once I saw him, he would have an answer for me and then I'd be able to fix it and I would be fine and my life could go back to the way that it was. So as I waited what seemed like the longest month of my life, <laughs> I was still terrified to drive. I was still terrified to stay home by myself. One night I woke up having a panic attack. <laughs> not knowing what was happening and I called 911 and an ambulance ended up coming to my house. I can't breathe like my heart is racing. I like I don't know what's going on. They put an EKG on me and listened to me. Couldn't find anything wrong and they were like do you want us to take you to the hospital? Do you want to stay here? Like you look okay to us and I was just like whatever like I'll just stay here <laughs> and I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed that I called them and they came and they couldn't find anything wrong with me. Like I literally thought I was crazy and I was losing my mind because something was happening to my body and I had no idea what and I had absolutely no control over it. So after that, I was really terrified to stay home alone and I learned that like being around people made me feel comfortable because I knew if something happened to me that there would be people there that would be able to take care of me. So I ended up going to the cardiologist and they did all these tests. I got like this heart monitor thing that I wore. Ended up coming to find they couldn't find anything wrong with me. So from there they were like maybe you have a neurological problem and I had another specialty appointment with a neurologist which was a month later. In the meantime I was still trying to figure out how to deal with what was going on. I can't even tell you guys how many times I went to the emergency room because I thought I was dying. <laughs> I ended up only being home when my roommate was home or I would ask to stay on like friends couches and I could feel myself overstaying my welcome. My friends would be like why do you want to sleep on my couch? when you could just stay in your bed. And then on nights where my roommate wasn't home or I had exhausted all my resources, I packed a bag and I slept in my car in front of the emergency room out in the parking lot. <laughs> Ended up living out of my car in the emergency room parking lot for at least four nights a week. And I kept going to see all of these different doctors. I saw so many doctors, guys. Ended up going to see different cardiologists and all this stuff and all these different doctors and the neurologist would give me medication for migraines because I had migraines and the cardiologist gave me medication for blood pressure because I had high blood pressure. I'll never forget. I was at my third neurologist consultation with my mom and I had my little bundle of paperwork and documents from previous doctors and I remember him telling me have you ever considered that you have anxiety? Because what you're describing to me sounds like panic attacks. And I remember being so pissed. I was like, are you effing kidding me? Anxiety? I've never once in my entire life had anxiety or had panic attacks. Like, you obviously suck at your job. You don't know what the crap you're talking about. And after months of continuing to sleep at the ER and staying at friend's house and making sure my roommate was home and all of this crazy stuff, I finally didn't care. So I went back to my general practitioner and I said, apparently I have anxiety according to my idiot neurologist and I don't care. If I do, I don't even care anymore. Like. I just want it fixed. If that's what it is, let's fix it. And mind you, after all of these different doctor's appointments, all of this different stuff going on, it had been like a year later until I decided that I was okay if that's what it was. I never understood anxiety and I never understood people that had anxiety. To be honest, as harsh as this sounds, I thought it was all in people's heads and that they were crazy. I remember my grandmother had such anxiety about driving at night like she couldn't do it she refused to do it because it gave her such anxiety she lived like an hour away from me and i was having like a birthday party or like graduation party or something it was something that was really important to me at the time and i remember inviting her and she was like honey i would love to but i can't because i can't drive at night and i remember being so pissed because i was like what do you mean you can't drive at night you just get in your car and like you just do it <laughs> But I understand now, <laughs> anxiety is so real. And just because you can't see it as a physical disorder, it's a disorder that a lot more people should be 
more aware of and more compassionate about, including my past self. Me and my general practitioner worked very closely together to figure out what anxiety medication worked well for me. And it took a while for us to find the medication that was right for me and that helped me. And I'm not saying that if you have anxiety, you need to be on medication. There are a lot of people that aren't on medication. I personally needed that help from my doctor. And looking back on my experience, the one thing I wish I did differently would have been to talk to my friends and my family sooner about how bad I was struggling. I'm still learning and growing every single day and unfortunately there was not one thing that just like cured and fixed it all for me. I've had to do a lot of internal soul digging. I am so mentally exhausted after filming this video. But I hope this video helped somebody out there in letting you know that it's gonna be okay, that you're gonna be okay, and most of all, you're not alone. I love you and it's important to surround yourself with people that truly care and love you. All right guys, thank you for watching this video. <laughs> Y'all mean so much to me and I am so grateful to have you guys. Remember to stay weird and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.